Fade out one. Fade in three. Pizza Flicks Television Division presents... Hello. I'm James Dean. Welcome to the Schlitz Playhouse of Stars. Our play is the story of a young man named Jeffrey Latham, who uh, opened the door of a very ordinary, innocent-looking roadside diner, and he found his whole life changed. Hey, Montana. It's your hardware is showing. Uh, so what? Cover it up, stupid. Hey, uh, how far is it to stand? Oh, about uh, four or five miles. Um, Are you on the road, kid? Yeah. Boy, they sure don't want to pick you up after dark, do they? Um, can I have a cup of coffee and a sandwich? There's ham, cheese, little worse. Coffee's coming up. Ah, the blasted thing's stuck again. Yeah. <laughs> I bet I can fix that. Fast work, kid. You a mechanic? Nope. Yep. Working diners. There's always something needs fixing. Mind if I join you? No. My name's Deegan. Mike Deegan. I'm uh, Jeff Latham. Right. You uh, got anybody waiting for you in Stanton? Mm -mm. How long did you say you worked in diners? Well, a couple of years off and on. Well, look, kid, I need a helper. How'd you like a job right here? Full condiments wages. All the grub you can eat. You like the saving room rent? Got a folding cot in the back room. Well, is it a deal? Okay. Listen, I got uh, some papers here. I got my army discharge. Ah, uh, forget it, kid. Put them away. I go by faces. You're hired. Okay. Hey, watch out, kid. You'll have that thing worn out. <laughs> I like to keep things looking good. I'm waiting for a guy to pick me up. I've got a little business in town. Wow. <laughs> That's a sweet job. You're a hard worker. I hope you like it here. I like it fine. Good wages, free food, free bunk. <laughs> Who wouldn't? Your feet are not itching for the road? Well, I'm glad, kid, because I like having you around. It's nice to have somebody to talk to. Mike? Yeah. Can I ask you a question? Sure, shoot. You know those two guys hang out in that booth over there all the time? What's their pitch? They come in here night and day like they were keeping office hours or something. Well, one's Matt Schreiber and the other's Roy Montana. I think they're bookies. Yeah? Why? Montana. He's got his nose in a racing form all the time. So? He plays the horses. No, but see... He takes night trips and he comes back with sealed envelopes and he slips them to Schreiber. I've watched this, Mike. I think the bookies. There's cash in those envelopes. And Schreiber has always got a row of bills that choke a horse. Schreiber happens to be in the used car business. Hot cars. No, kid. Schreiber is strictly legit. Uh, well, there's no display room? No office? Well, it's this way, kid. Schreiber sells his cars through garages. Got garage connections all over the country. Real smart guy. Buys low for cash. Sells high for credit. That's where Montana fits in. He takes care of the installment collections. Well, sounds funny. <laughs> but 
Forget it, kid. I've known Schreiber for years. I'll see you later, kid. Okay. See you, Mike. We used to have square dances back in Wisconsin. You're a long way from home. Yeah. I've been farther away. It's in Korea a couple of years. No square dances on that jaunt. I know. I lost my brother over there. I'm sorry. He was a flyer. He was shot down at a place called Hung Jam. Hung Jam? Mm hmm. Yeah. I, I went through there. You did? Small world, isn't it? We meet in here, total strangers. Find out we have a mutual interest in the Hung Jum Korea. <laughs> of all places. Well, I better go now. Thanks again about the poster. I hope you'll come to the dance. Well, certainly will. Save me a couple of dances. Ask me to dance. Hello, miss. I don't even know what your name is. Anne Burnett. My father has Welcome Farm. Uh, I'm Jeff Layton. Hi. Yeah. You to take it easy there now. <laughs> he kept you. <laughs> New suit fits good, doesn't it? Huh? Looks good, huh? Yeah, kid, you're beautiful. I'll bet you'll bowl over that apple grower's daughter. Oh, my, come on. Ah, oh, it's just joking. Have a good time to dance. Well, if I can just catch your eye. Well, now, look, this is a special occasion. We've got to do everything right. Here you are. Use my car. Thanks, Mike. Okay. Thanks. Hey, kid. You want to take the girl for a little ride after the dance? Okay. I'll hold the boy. I really appreciate this, Mike. You know what I'll do? Huh? I won't even dent your fenders. Ah. Boy, that stag line, they could have killed me. <laughs> Wasn't it fun, Jeff? I bet you never had any dances like that back in Wisconsin. No, no, we didn't. But uh, that's because you weren't there. Jeff, be sensible now. Hey, come here. Huh. That old moon up there. You know what I found out tonight? Well. Ever since I got back from Korea, I've been drifting along, doing odd jobs. But I kept, I kept figuring that someday, someplace, I'd find a nice, friendly little town and I'd settle down there. Get a steady job and a steady girl, if I was lucky. And, well, this is it. Stanton. I'm glad, Jeff. Are you? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to rush things like that. I just, uh, things have 
Uh, I, I waited so long for something like that to happen, and I just... I don't know. I'm sorry. It's all right, Jim. was really something. Hey, how'd you like my dosey doze? One more swing here, partner, is all I can take. <laughs> but it's fun. It certainly is. Hi there. I'm Bob Page, your Schlitz man, and this is Jane Hampton. And lots of people enjoy square dancing these days, but it sure makes a fella thirsty. Still, being thirsty's all right, for it affords you a chance to reach for a tall, cool bottle of Schlitz. When your thirst is wetted for a bottle of the finest beer, Schlitz Hits the spot. No other beer refreshes like Schlitz. Cooling, refreshing. Schlitz makes all the difference in the world. Really, friends, Schlitz is so light and dry with a wonderfully zestful flavor all its own. It tastes so good. Once you try it, you'll know what we mean. It's more than just the taste of the beer on the tongue. When you enjoy a glass of Schlitz, your thirst can actually feel the difference. A smooth, palatable difference. Never harsh, never bitter. Schlitz is so delightfully refreshing. No wonder it made a city famous. No wonder so many people agree. If, if you, you like, like beer, beer, you'll, you'll love Schlitz. Schlitz. And now back to your Schlitz Playhouse of Stars. <laughs> Howdy do. All right, come on. Add it, Rod. Come on now, come on, give me the dough. There you are. There's more than that. Come on, the whole. Ain't got any more. You're holding out on me, I know. All right. Now you can go. Okay then. Let's go. But I don't get tossed out empty-handed. Your wallet, Matt. A nice fat wallet. Hand it over. You won't get even as far as the door, Montana. <laughs> <laughs> I told you you wouldn't get as far as the door. Now, my wallet. Now turn in your car keys. How am I going to get back to town? Walk, blast you, and when you get to Stanton, don't stop. If you know what's good for you, now beat it. Gotta go take a look at back, Mike. Make sure the kid ain't there. We got talking to do. She sure looks funny. See that booth empty? It's three days now. No Shriver, no Montana. Stay at a bus stop, kid. The night you was off to the dance. Oh, yeah? What happened? Same old story. Sticky fingers. Montana's been jipping Schreiber on the collections. Schreiber found out. Say, kid, will you do me a personal favor? Yeah. What? Well, Schreiber's hung up. With Montana gone, he's got nobody to make the collections. And he thought maybe you'd fill in on the job until he got things straightened out. Nothing to it, kid. You just drive around with a list of garages and pick up the dough. Soft way to make a few extra bucks. Might run as high as 40 or 50 a week for you. All right. I'll have to think about that, Mike. Huh? Hello, kid. Hello, Mike. Well, did you tell him? I was explaining the deal, Matt. It's a personal favor to me, kid. Yeah, to me. How about it, kid? Look, Schreiber, I'm not going to get mixed up in anything phony. Phony? If these are hot cars you're selling or anything like that, I don't want any part of it. I don't care how much you pay me. So you think I handle stolen cars? <laughs> oh, kid, I never handled a hot car in my life. Ask Mike. That's right, kid. You can take my word for that. Take the job, Jeff. Well, I... I just wanted to be careful. I don't want to get, you know, mixed up in 
Sure, sure, I understand. What I have to do? Yeah. Here's a list of places you call on. And you can use Montana's car. I guess. You sure? I got two bullet holes in the windshield. He started shooting at me, and then I heard a siren. Go on, what happened? Well, I went around a curve like crazy, so did he, and then uh, he didn't make it, because he, he went off the road, and then I heard him smack into a tree or something. Well, spill it all. Did you stop? No, he, I, those bullets missed me by inches. I just kept going. Well, Mike, we got to check on this. First, we get rid of that car. Bad news for you, kid. The cop's dead. He's dead? The trooper's dead, are you sure? He broke his neck when his car bounced off the tree. And I look, that's not my fault. That was an accident. Now, I didn't make his car go into a skid. Take it easy, kid. Well, that, 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 he has no business shooting at me like that. Going down an empty road, speeding, that... Anybody else would have ducked and run with all those bullets flying around there. <laughs> Keep your shirt on, kid. You're in the clear. Everything's under control. Nobody saw what happened out there at the quarry. And we fixed it so nobody will ever know. What do you mean? Mike and me just give the trooper's car a shove downhill into the quarry pool. Water's 45 feet deep. That takes care of everything. You pushed the car into the water with the trooper still inside of it? What else was there to do? The guy was dead, stone cold dead. No use asking for trouble. Pull yourself together, kid. Like Matt told you, everything's okay. The dough. What'd you do with the collections? Ah, good kid. Now look, kid, if anybody comes in here asking you questions, you clam up. You don't know anything, but you've been right here on the job all night. Now, you got that? Nobody's going to come asking questions. Thanks very much. That's great, kid. Came back, Jeff. I got to talk to you. I didn't want Schreiber to know. I'm glad you did. I can't take it. I uh, keep thinking about that dead trooper. I keep trying to tell myself it, it was an accident, that it wasn't my fault, but I can't make that stick. Look, the guy took a shot at you, didn't he? He had it coming. Yeah, but I keep seeing the car down the water, 40 feet down, him in it. I, I don't even know what he looked like. Maybe he had a wife, maybe he had a kid Look, or something. what's done is done. Yeah, like, but uh, that ain't what I came back to talk to you about. 
This ain't gonna be easy for me, kid. But you gotta know the score. I lied to you about Matt's racket. And it is stolen cars. No, not hot cars. Hot cargo. You know, hijack stuff, stolen from trucks. What kind of stuff? Oh, cigarettes, nylons, tires, radios, anything that's easy to sell. The hot goods goes to a string of garage men who peddle this stuff retail. And I was out tonight collecting crooked money for Schreiber. Schreiber's a smart operator. He don't stick out his own chin. I trusted you. What'd you lie to me for? I didn't do anything I to you, to, Mike. I had to, Jeff. I had to. Schreiber's got something on me from way back. If I don't toe the line, he turns me into the cops. It'd mean 20 years. Well, he's got something on me now. Schreiber cracks a whip. I gotta jump, too. Look, kid. I don't want you stuck in this racket like I was. I like you. We hit it off fine. Now I'm gonna do you the biggest favor of your life. I want you to get out of here. I want you to get out of here and fast. Here, stuff it in your pockets. All of you. And then get going and keep on going. Mind if I cut in now? I figured maybe you'd try sneaking back here, Mike. You didn't know I had the key to the back door, did you? You're yellow, Mike. You always were yellow. Now, scram. And next time, don't try sneaking back. Now, get this straight, kid. You're hooked. You're working for me now. You are taking orders and liking it, or I'll spill it to the cops about Tattnall Quarry. I didn't push that car in the water. Your idea. <laughs> Try proving that to the cops. Whatever story I tell them, Deegan will back me up. You know what happens to cop killers. They burn. I don't have much choice, do I, Schreiber? Check. Now we understand each other. I got a good racket running here. You behave yourself and I see you make a lot of dough. Only remember, don't try to get off the hook. took out after me. Well, he started shooting at me, and I, I got scared, and I didn't want to stop. But he kept on chasing me, and then I heard it, the car skid off the road. Did you get your license number? It doesn't matter. The trooper's dead. He broke his neck when he went off the, off the side Chip, of the... Chip, no. So, I'm going to give myself up. They don't know yet it was me, but I got to do it. I keep thinking about it. But will they believe you? Will they believe it was just an accident? I don't know. I gotta take my chances. Oh, Jeff, what's gonna happen? I knew I shouldn't have come up here. But I wanted to tell you myself before... Before it got into Jeff, the Jeff, I'm papers. coming with you. No, oh no. Please, Jeff, no, I, I want to... Look, if you come along, they're gonna ask you questions. You don't know what to answer. You... Then let me wake up, Father. He'll know what to do. You'll need a no, lawyer. Anne, no, please. No, not now. See, I just, I just wanted to see you, and I, I want to say goodbye to you here, alone. Okay. All right, Latham. You can stop holding out now. Sit down. Now tell us the truth about what happened out at Tatnall's Quarry. I've been over and over and over and over and over that. I don't know what else to tell you. You're concealing the truth. You're trying to cover up for somebody. You said this other car skidded off the road, hit a tree, then rolled into the pool. It didn't. It was pushed in. 
It was pushed into the pool by two men, Michael Deegan and Matthew Schreiber. They're both under arrest, Latham, and Deegan has made a full confession. So you might as well talk freely now. Okay. After the accident, I went back, I saw Schreiber and Deegan, I told them what had happened. They rushed out to Tattnall's, they found the trooper with a broken neck and they pushed him in the water. They were trying to cover up for me. They lied to you, Latham. We got that car up out of the pool. The dead man in it had a broken leg, not a broken neck. What killed him was a bullet in the brain. What? That's crazy. I don't have a... I don't have a gun. I didn't shoot him. I've got another surprise for you. That wasn't a state trooper that was chasing you last night. That was just a car rigged up with a siren to fool you. The driver of the car was a man named Roy Montana. Montana? Montana was trying to get that money I had. All Montana got out of the smash-up was a broken leg. That's the way Deegan and Schreiber found him. Then Schreiber pulled out his gun and killed Montana in cold blood. It's all here in Deegan's confession. Mike Deegan. I thought he was my friend. I did try to cover up for him. And he let me go on thinking I'd killed a man. Latham, you'll never know how lucky you were. If you hadn't had the courage to come in here and give yourself up to us, you might have been working for Schreiber for the rest of your life. Sweating it out over a murder you never committed. As it is, you probably get off with probation. Can I see, uh... Deegan's confession? Sorry, Latham. It's against regulations. But there is one thing I can do for you. There's a young lady who has been out here for hours. Just waiting to see you. our story, friends. We hope you enjoyed it. Next week, the Schlitz Playhouse of Stars will present Eddie Albert as a dumb cowpoke who's really not quite as dumb as he appears. In the meantime, may I suggest that this week, you pay a visit to a good neighbor of yours, your friendly tavern owner who brings you Schlitz, the beer that made Milwaukee famous. This is National Tavern Month, and we invite you to enjoy the most famous taste in beer at your neighborhood tavern. For really, there's no refreshment quite like Schlitz. If you like beer, you'll love Schlitz. This is Bob Page for the Joseph Schlitz Brewing Company bidding you a very pleasant good night.